welcome back to another tutorial today I wanted to show you uh, real fast how to go ahead and start uh, creating the pauldron I'm not going to show you the whole process of creating the pauldron it's no different than creating anything else that's kind of weird <laughs> uh, it's no different than creating anything else on the entire body there's nothing special about it it's just in a different location but you may be wondering uh, the reason I wanted to show you this you may be wondering what shape to begin using to develop a pauldron you know what's the initial best base shape well you have all in the object type under the geometry for the create geometry and object type you have these different shapes over here and I have always uh, found that the uh, tube is the best one to use. Uh, now I'll show you how to go about setting it up. The reason I use the tube is because the tube will allow you to texture underneath the pauldron and on top of the pauldron. So you basically be able to texture all the way around the pauldron uh, as opposed to you know using a different shape that would be uh, very thin you know and give the illusion of thickness. This is actually a thick shape. So you can use any of these to work with when making any part of uh, the armor. They're all useful tools, you know, useful shapes. So uh, to start out, uh, I'm going to go ahead and select the tube because that's the shape I want to create. I'm not going to worry about these settings here. Uh, they're not very important. You can maybe increase your cap or your height. Uh, for this, I'm not, uh, not going to go through all that. But anyways, no different than I would have uh, created anything else. I'm just going to go to my top view pane. And over here in the top view pane, I'm going to drag out. Now the first one sets the basic uh, width of it. Uh, and then the second one also sets a width of it and then the third one sets the height of it. All right, so the first two basically set the width and the third uh, click will set the height. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set mine pretty tall and you can always reshape it later and just play around with it. Now, as soon as you've created your tube, you go ahead and right click off. Now, first thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and locate that UV, uh, that UV map. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna right click on the uh, tube that I just created. I'm gonna convert it to an editable poly or actually an editable mesh, I'm sorry. Editable mesh. Once you have it as an editable mesh, you drop uh, down your modifiers and you go and you find your unwrap UVW. This will give us our line. Okay, we can see where the line is. And as you can see, mine's dead in the middle. So if I go over here in this window, that tells me that the line is right here. Because in both these windows, this is this is the front. You know, here's the body. This is the front. This is right where the line is. So I can basically chop this sucker dead in half. All right, now if you'll notice, if I go over here to the perspective and I just wanted to show you, there's texture on the inside of this cylinder on the outside rim for both the top and the bottom, and there's also going to be texture out here. When we unwrap it, it'll texture all three of these, you know, for our canvas. Well, we don't want this whole cylinder. We want to chop it in half so we can create a cylinder, or a pauldron. So I'll go over here. I'll go ahead and I'll select the cylinder that I have. Now I know where the unwrap is. I'm just going to convert it to an editable poly. And then I'm going to delete half of it. So I'll just go ahead and use my polygon tool. And from the top view pane, I'm going to select everything on the uh, right hand side. Now I know that this is just basically here's the UV line. If you look in the perspective, that's the UV line where I had it uh, before. And I'm just going to chop this thing in half. So I just hit delete. Now as soon as I have everything chopped in half, something you want to take note of, if you come over here in the perspective, you'll notice now it's hollow. I don't want that. I want it to look like, you know, it's an entire pauldron, you know, it's just this thick uh, mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these two sides. Now the easiest way to do that is to just come over here, select your vertex tool, and from the top view pane, select all these vertices that I just selected. You see I have all these ones selected. Um, just because I went, I went and I selected this. So if you look over here, I've selected them all the way down the line. Now I'm going to weld them together. Okay, and to do that, I just go down here to weld. I'm going to hit my settings, and I'm going to set the weld threshold. Just you can make this any number. I'm just going to make it a five. All right, and then I'll just hit check. Whammo! It just closed that hole and gave me kind of a nice edge to work with. I do the same thing with the other side. I'm just going to whoops. Uh, let me do that again. <laughs> select it uh, and go ahead and weld it. All right, and then deselect it. All right, now I select the other ones and I'm going to weld them as well. And now it's closed on both ends and I'll deselect it. And that's just an easy way to get a three dimensional object. Now, this is just a matter of shaping it onto the body however I want. Now, if you wanted to, you can also delete the top section and get you an edge on the top. 
So I'd just go use my polygon tool and I'd select all the polygons along the top edge. You know, and then I'd just delete them. And then I'd use my vertice tool. Now I need the ones just on top, so a good view to do that from is from the side pane. So I zoom in. I just come in, I select all of this. Oh, that's just the ones on top. And I go over here and I weld those too. Now you might get a weird shape when you do that, something like this. So that's not usually the best, uh, that's not the entirely best way to do it. So I'm going to hit Control Z. Uh, another way you can do it is you can select uh, from the perspective window. You can join them up uh, two at a time. So I just select this one and this one. So I can see they're kind of you know in their point and then I'd hit weld on those two. And I'd deselect them, select this one and this one and weld them and just do that all the way down the line. There's probably a better way to do it. Uh, so I just weld each one one at a time. And this is kind of just, I'm creating the shape that I want to use to mold it into a pauldron by, you know, uh, welding up the sides and it's going to be this nice little thick shape that I can use to create a cool uh, pauldron for my armor. And you'll notice there's the exact the same amount, so when I'm welding them, I'll have just enough vertices to weld together uh, as I do this. Now I have this, uh, you know, top part is kind of welded pretty good. That's a good shape to work with. And then I can do the same thing with the bottom. I can come down here, uh, delete all these polygons. That's up to you. If you wanted yours to remain kind of thick, you know, like this, and you didn't want to delete these, well, you wouldn't, but I want mine to kind of be pointy on both ends, you know, and then I'm just going to shape it however I want. And just using the uh, vertex tool, do the same thing, just weld them together, just like I did with the top. Now, no different than you'd move the cylinder around, you know, after you get your initial shape set up. It's no different than how you'd move the cylinder around and move it and shape it to the body and, you know, how you want it. You just move it up onto the shoulder and start moving vertices around until it's shaped the way you want it to. Or you can pre-shape it before you even get it up there and then scale it down to the right shape and continue to work with it and shape it however you want your pauldron to look. I just wanted to show you guys that this is a good shape to start working with and I wanted to show you how you could weld some vertices together to kind of get the shape you want. Now this is a really good shape to build a pauldron with. You know, it's already round, and I can just scale it and move it to where I want it. So if I go over here and I hit Alt-W, make this window large all the way, I can select uh, my element tools, select the cylinder that I just click, click Rotate, and let's go ahead and rotate it. Uh, looks like it's the Y axis, so I'd go down here to Y and rotate that by 90. Now it's on its side, and I would just take it and move it over onto the shoulder. Yeah. This is just a really easy way to get your pauldron set up. And as soon as it's on the shoulder, now I'm ready to shape it, you know, and I can ro you know, rotate it to fit on the arm a little better. And you basically just set it on the uh, arm and then I just scale it, you know, scale it down some to fit better. And come in from a side, you know, make sure I line it up and move it over and maybe over some more. And voila, I have the beginnings of a pauldron. Yeah, and then it's just a matter of shaping it. You know, I'd have to put a lot more work into it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the page on this video here so and shape my pauldron. I don't know if I'm going to put a pauldron on mine. I might not. Um, I kind of like it without the pauldron. In fact, I'm not going to put one on mine. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and turn the page anyways. And you'll see me testing out what I've currently created uh, you know, in game. You'll see what I've created in game. And I wanted to show you something that's going to be in an upcoming tutorial when we start covering textures. I've made this belt shiny. You know, I've made the these buttons are going to have a reflective property to it. And that's just, a, you know, something that's going to be upcoming in a tutorial in the future about texturing whenever we get into more advanced texturing and effects. Uh, and I just wanted you to get a little preview of, you know, just a very basic texture trick to make uh, texture shiny. Uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and delete this and uh, I'll see you here in a second in game. Hi, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, here's my armor in game. I've uh, you know done a little bit of texture modifying. Uh, I'm not going to do too much modifying on my textures. I'm just using basic texturing for now until we get into the 
uh, the tutorials on texturing we're actually you know creating our armor and we're going to be redoing a lot of the textures on our armor or you know you can if you don't if you want whenever you find out all the cool tricks that we're going to be learning about like reflection of the environment shiny effects on the buckles now here's this cool thing that I want to show you noticed how the buckle let me face a light source here a little better the buckle is reflecting light sources this is just one of the examples here if you look real close at the belt buckle it's actually not just the belt buckle but all the metal parts uh, on the belt are set up to reflect light and I'm going to be teaching you tricks you know how to get stuff like this done and I'm going to show you how to with my armor I'm actually going to make my armor reflect the environment around it you know so when I'm running around it really looks like this really polished shiny armor that can reflect anything hey see I put quite a bit of work into mine hopefully you have to you know I added that skirt and that really did a lot for it I mean it just made a huge difference I made like a leather skirt for it um, I'll also you know, be teaching you tricks in 3ds Max how to take a texture that you've already created and apply effects to it using the material editor in 3ds Max and then how to actually export those changes you've made uh, into the DDS file uh, the paint the viewport canvas is only a small part on what's possible with 3ds Max's viewport canvas or painting rather sorry uh, I mean it's just we've only covered just a just a hair of uh, the full possibilities. I mean I can make uh, some effects in 3ds Max in the material editor. I can load my texture up in the material editor. Uh, not the viewport canvas. It's two different things. In the material editor I can put my texture in there and I can add uh, really really fine crisp lines to it uh, and change some material properties on it and then after I've changed the material properties I can open up the viewport canvas and resave it as a DDS with the new changes that I've done in the material editor so I mean like I said we've only we've only just began with texturing so so this is sort of starting to look like a really nice armor like I said I didn't want to put anything over the shoulder I decided against it I might put something around her neck some kind of collar or something to protect her neck I, don't, I haven't decided on it but anyways we're pretty much done with the body at this point I've covered uh, quite a bit about modeling and how to get your body set up I'm pretty sure uh, everyone that's made it this far in the tutorials can you know, start out and they, you guys know enough now to where you can create full body armor you know uh, in the next uh, moving from here in the next tutorial we're actually going to start focusing on the creation of boots uh, and then after we're done with boots and the basics with working with feet, you know, and boots and such, uh, then we'll do gloves and then probably the helmet and the face mask as we've discussed. So I believe our very next step will be boots in the next video. I'll begin working with the feet, showing you the basics with, uh, you know, how to get the feet on the, um, into the game and working like we did with the body armor. But, uh, you know, again, you know, at, at times you can go to the Skyrim Nexus, to the web page associated with these videos, and upload an image there, you know, and show other people what you've created before we move on to the boots and the gloves. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to. It could look like garbage compared to what's on my screen, or it could blow mine away. You know, how it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, it's, it's encouraging to other people just starting out to see what you've created so far in the tutorial so again I haven't haven't really gotten many of you to upload images um, but I have seen a few of yours and I also you know I've started a new uh, series that kind of uh, you know represents mods that were created by users who use these tutorials uh, which you'll get if you're subscribed to the channel you'll uh, see those pop up anyways I'll see you guys for the next tutorial and we'll start working on creating our boots graphically uh, and go from there.